Hello, welcome to the self-learning platform by Dr. Sushma Singh. Today we start Unit 2, Constitutionalism, BNA Act of 1867, Constitutional Act of 1982, Charter of Rights and Freedoms. And we are going to discuss Charter of Rights and Freedoms. The BNA Act of 1867 did not include a Bill of Rights because it was assumed that unwritten conventions inherited from Britain provided effective protection for civil liberties. Canada entrenched its Charter of Rights more than a century after the country was founded. Parliament passed a Bill of Rights in 1961, but it applied only to federal institutions and did not have constitutional weight. The Constitutional Act of 18, 1982, through its first 34 sections, provided in the Constitution the Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms. The Charter begins with a Cypriotic re revital that Canada is founded upon principles that recognize the supremacy of God and the rule of law. The Charter of Rights is divided into specific heads and each head enumerates the rights and freedoms relevant to it. These divisions include fundamental freedoms, democratic rights, mobility rights, legal rights, equality rights, official language rights, minority language education rights, as also protection of the aboriginal rights. The Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms under the heading of Fundamental Freedoms guarantees some of the same rights called fundamental freedoms. There are protected in the U.S. Bill of Rights, freedom of conscience and religion, freedom of thought, belief, opinion and expression, including freedom of the press, freedom of the peaceful assembly and freedom of association. It guarantees legal rights such as the pre-assumption of innocence, the right to life liberty and security of the person and security against unreasonable search and seizure. The first section of the charter states that its guarantees are subject only to such reasonable limits prescribed by law as can be demonstrably justified in a free and democratic society. A qualification not found in the U.S. Constitution. As mentioned above, the Charter also guarantees democratic rights such as the right to vote, mobility rights, such as the right to take up residence in any province and equal protection under the law for all Canadians while specifically permitting affirmative action programs. It includes language provisions that are particularly Canadian. It establishes English and French as official languages and guarantees certain minority language education rights. 
The constitution also preserves the rights and privileges acquired or enjoyed either before or after the commencement of the charter of rights and freedoms with respect to any language that is not French or English. Under minority language education rights, the constitution provides that a Canadian citizen educated in Canada in English may send his or her children to a school in English in Quebec. In addition, a Canadian citizen who has a child being educated in English in Canada may continue to send any of his or her children to a school in English if she or he moves to Quebec. The above provisions apply to the French minority in other nine provinces. In addition, the other nine provisions have agreed that any Canadian citizen whose mother tongue is French will be entitled to send his or her children to a school in French. A feature of the charter according to Sir Nanyan Stephen is the two general qualifications made to the applicability of its otherwise far-reaching provisions. The first makes the rights and freedoms which the charter guarantees subject to such reasonable limits prescribed by law as can be demonstrably justified in a free and democratic society. Thus, no statutory denial of a right or freedom will contravene the charter if it results in no more than a reasonable limitation such as can be demonstrated to be justified in such a society. What is reasonable and what can be so justified must necessarily remain for the courts to determine. The second and more specific qualification permits the federal or any provincial legislature to declare in any status that statute shall operate notwithstanding its inconsistency with the fundamental freedoms and legal and equality rights guaranteed by the charter. Such a declaration only operates for five years but may be renewed for successive periods of five years. These provisions means that the rights are not absolute. The state can place necessary restrictions on them though limited and demonstrably just. The freedoms and rights provided by the Constitution are enforceable by the courts. Section 24 provides that anyone whose rights or freedoms as guaranteed by this charter have been infringed may apply to a court of competent jurisdiction to obtain such remedy as the court considers appropriate and just in the circumstances. The Charter of Rights at the same time protects rights of Aboriginal people and does not allow general rights to be constructed so as to abrogate or degrade from any Aboriginal treaty or other rights or freedoms that pertain to the aboriginal peoples of Canada. It is further provided that this charter shall be interpreted in a manner consistent with the preservation and enhancement 
of the multicultural heritage of Canadians. Inclusion of the Charter of the Constitution marked a departure from the principle of parliamentary supremacy and an expansion of the role of the courts as federal and provincial laws must now confirm to the Charter as well as to the division of powers. However, the Charter includes a notwithstanding clause that permits parliament or a provincial legislature to pass legislation which violates some of these rights by inserting in the law a declaration that it shall operate notwithstanding a certain provision of the charter for up to five years. This clause has been invoked by the Quebec and the Saskatchewan legislatures. Thus, the Charter of Rights included in the Constitution through the Constitution Act 1982 provides for fundamental freedoms, democratic rights, mobility rights, legal rights, equality rights, minority language, educational rights and rights of aboriginal people. These are subjects only to such reasonable limits prescribed by law as can be demonstrably justified in a free and democratic society. Now we want to wind up this lecture and thank you so much for your attention.